In this lecture, we'll talk about financing with long-term debt. As we said earlier, long-term assets don't come cheaply, and few companies have the cash on hand to open a new store across town or to build a new facility to launch some new product line. To develop such fixed assets, companies need to raise low-cost, long-term funds. Two common choices for raising these funds are attracting new owners, that's equity financing, which we'll look at later, and taking on long-term liabilities, that is debt financing, which we'll look at now. Long-term debt liabilities are debts that will be paid over, the ne over a number of years, such as long-term bank loads or bond issues. These take many different forms, but in the end, the key word is debt. Companies that rely heavily on debt can get into serious trouble should the economy falter and they can't make the payments. That might force them into bankruptcy if they cannot meet their monthly interest obligations. These debts typically have what are called loan covenants, which mean you have to meet certain liquidity metrics and continue to meet those metrics, or oftentimes some of this long-term debt becomes due sooner, accelerates the payments, if you will. So it's important that the operating efficiency and liquidity in the company remains high. Much long-term debt takes the form of bonds, which are debt instruments that larger companies sell to the market to raise long-term funds. The buyers of bonds, bondholders, loan the issuer cash in exchange for regular interest payments until the loan is repaid in full upon a specified maturity date. The bond contract, or indenture as it's called, specifies the terms of the agreement. The face value of the bond is typically, uh, the sales, the, its initial sales price is typically $1,000. The annual interest rate, often called the coupon rate, is the percentage of face value that the company pays its bondholders yearly. Those, uh, those payments can come in the mail as your, your interest payments. Uh, they could also be accrued into the principal. Not surprisingly, there are a great many different types of bonds. Most are unsecure bonds, meaning that they're not backed by collateral. Such bonds are termed debentures. Secured bonds are, lacked, are backed by specific collateral and must be forfeited, the, the collateral must be forfeited in the event the issuing firm defaults, like a real estate loan, something like that. Serial bonds are usually a sequence of small bonds small bond issues with progressively longer maturity over time. So you have a series of things, short term, long term, medium term, uh, a series of bonds with, pro pro with a progressively longer maturity. There's also what are called floating rate bonds. Uh, these don't have a fixed interest payment, but instead the interest rate is uh, tracked with some sort of an index. It changes with current interest rates, sometimes what's called the LIBO rate or a prime rate for a particular firm or some other uh, metric of the prevailing interest rate. In recent years, a special type of high interest bond has attracted uh, attention um, in the financial press. These are called high interest bonds or junk bonds as they are uh, popularly known. These have relatively high rates of interest because they have higher inherent risk. Sometimes they're called zero coupon high interest rates bonds or zero coupon junk bonds, which means that you don't have any payments, but the payment at the end, all the interest is accrued till the end and there's a large lump sum payment at the end of the term of maturity. These are junk bonds or high, high yield bonds, they call them. In the next lecture, we'll talk about financing with owner's equity.